Where last we left off. The party had just finished their conversation with uh, now a new crew member, a Drell Spectre who goes by Primrose, who you'll be working with in regard to the Syndicate. You've also come into some somewhat disturbing news that the allegedly the entity is making its way into terminus space explicitly to speak with the syndicate leaders at least that is what rabbit aka salem has led them to believe according to primrose's information unfortunately there isn't really anything practical that you can do about this meeting uh so i believe we're the, the current course that's set is you were planning to finally, with your new suits and new submersible, head to Despoina and try to get to the bottom of what this entity actually is. Though we will bookmark this planet for future vacations. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> the volleyball scene is strong. <laughs> uh anyway uh, yeah we are we are on a clock here so uh once once we have all the uh, all the information that we need uh, aaron's gonna uh send out the message to everyone that uh the uh well shore leave shore leave is over and we're uh we're back to business all right everyone receives an indication on their omni tool that you are Captain has called you back to the ship, and it's time to get back to work. Monk is there and ready. All right. Ready to head out. Shame you couldn't join us, Kronk. I think you look good in a bikini. More of a speedo man myself. Damn it, I'll never get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron will head back to the ship and get uh, get changed into our normal normal clothes. Uh, the uh, the unassuming underlay with what looks like just doesn't really look like armor because she's got her own uh, her own protections allows her to fly under the radar a little bit. You bid the beautiful and scenic uh, planet of Kirapesh farewell as you board the. SSV Saratoga, and take flight back into space. A new member of your crew, Primrose, takes their place on the balcony overlooking the engine room, kind of uh, dangling their feet off the side as they disassemble and clean a small silenced pistol. You got another edgy one. <laughs> I mean... Gotta have our edgy rogues. I mean, we're starting a collection. This, this is a this is a balcony overlooking one, though, not to be confused with the corner barrel category that Rolt mm -hmm. falls into. <laughs> you gotta, they're, they're the edgy NPCs. They're they're they have different breeds, right? You can tell by their habitat. So it's all about maintaining a variety of flavor. Nick, if, if like. If I ever open up a tavern, I'm going to make sure there's a bright light shining in every corner. Yep. Or I will just hire people to preoccupy them whenever we're opening. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. Uh, Aaron is going to give uh, give David the word that we'll be, uh, we'll be casting off at his, his earliest convenience and uh, setting course for... Uh, Despoina. On it. Alrighty. And uh, she'll go have a word with uh, with Dr. Fay as well. So we're finally doing it. Ah, uh, yes, we are. So sorry for the delay. We've been caught up with other matters that 
seemed just as pressing, but we're finally ready. Listen. We're going into our uncharted waters here. I've already told you everything that I know about the Leviathans. My mother didn't survive her mission with the late Commander Shepard. That means nothing survived her. Shepard didn't share. So I don't know if they're friend or I don't know if they're friend or foe. I don't know what to expect. Well, we may be going in blind, but it's the um, it is the logical next step and the best chance we have to really understand what it is we're up against. And she'll kind of glance to the uh, um, like to wherever wherever there's like a microphone or camera in this room that uh, that Adam would be would be listening to, and uh, by extension, Snake. And uh, she'd uh, she'd say, besides, if we don't make it. At least there's some, there's a possibility that our work might be continued. I'm just kind of making just eye contact with the with the camera, just implicitly telling Snake that if we don't make it, then uh, he's the only one that really has all the uh, information and resources necessary to carry the mission on. Bay kind of looks at Aaron and then looks at the camera, and it's like, um, okay. I'm not really sure what you mean by that, but because she's—I don't think she knows about Snake. Does I she? I, I don't, don't know. I don't think. No, she doesn't. Right? None of the NPCs like know about this. Yeah, I, th I think it's only yeah. the senior crew. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like <laughs> only the party knows. Yeah. So she's just like, all right. <laughs> Talking to the studio audience, I see. Yeah. Just, just contingencies, Doctor. Well. You're, you can't take the Saratoga down there. You'll be doing this mission in the new S9 Enzo. Of course. Looking forward to seeing how it handles. Adam speaks up and says, Uh, by the way, uh, the Enzo doesn't have me. It also doesn't have other things the Saratoga has. Do you want it to? You know, other things. Hmm. After a very brief pause, he goes, I'm talking about things that not everyone knows about. I know. <laughs> like, really loud. I know what you're talking about, Adam. <laughs> okay, cool. Just making sure. I don't have access to put me or the things on the submarine. <laughs> so if you want that, you'll need to do it. We will... We'll discuss that before we uh, before we make our uh, our final approach. When all we right, first right. got the things, I believe Ray did ask Erin if she could put a copy of Adam onto it, and she said yes. I I don't know if I was committal to that because I know that with uh, with Adam comes Snake, but I guess we are keeping Snake fully in the loop on this. I mean, Snake doesn't necessarily automatically come with Adam. S Snake's program is separate from Adam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't be putting Adam into the machine. I would basically be putting a copy into the machine that could function similarly, and then I could just share information when it returns to the ship. Okay, just something that could remerge. Yeah, exactly. Right. Although Ray, I will note, Ray has never successfully copied Adam and has not fully explored what that would actually involve. And Very might true. be disappointed with how hard that is to do, considering what he is. We might have to just right. hard, hard transfer the whole the whole program. Yeah, you may find that you can't actually make another atom. Ray also has someone who's a lot better with like machine tech than she is with her now. So, mm. um, well, before leaving, uh, Doctor Aaron, we'll, uh, we'll ask: Is there anything else we need to uh, to do or know going into this? Any Sorry, other, you were asking. Uh, any other preparations you'd recommend, Doctor Fay? I have no idea. I will say you have one leg up over my mother and Shepard. Twenty years ago, when they submerged on Despoina, their submersibles were very archaic compared to what you have now. 
no military force in the council space had really bothered to innovate submersible military tech so it was they were big bulky slow suits not very good at defending themselves the deep sea suits you have access to that the alliance has developed are significantly more advanced in fact i suspect the fact that these were invented may actually be because probably some top brass of the alliance know about leviathans and wanted a contingency you should actually be able to fight in those suits maybe a little awkwardly underwater well, but we hope we don't have to yeah, that's my hope, too, especially with what little data I have in the Leviathans. It would probably be a very one-sided fight, but it's something. Mm -hmm. All right, well, best of luck to all of us. And we'll brief you fully on uh, everything we find. Unless you'd rather not. Um... I do, I do want to know. I do. All right, then. We'll keep you in the loop. Thank you. Uh, and she'll peek her head into the uh, into the bridge and uh, say, Shepard, could I speak with you in the conference room real quick? Bang. I think Arturo probably isn't actually hanging out in the conference room. <laughs> <laughs> Send Arturo back to his room. Um, I say Aaron. Uh, Aaron will will say in. So in preparation for this uh, mission, the uh, the inquiry is whether or not to bring uh, to bring Adam with us, which I don't see any problem with. But the inquiry is also whether or not we want to bring uh, Snake's listening equipment or his listening program along. And I'd like to hear your thoughts if you have any on the matter. Definitely presents a sticky wicket into all of this. My thinking is he that he is an ally and the more informed at least an ally of convenience for now. And the more informed he is, the better uh better chance we have of receiving help from him if we need it. Also, if our mission goes south beyond uh, this one, there's a chance that he could uh, continue the effort with, uh, with any information that we've passed along to him. Alternately, we know these leviathans like their privacy, and they might not like it being, uh, being out there where they are and what they're like. Because he is an information broker, we don't know whose hands it's going to end up in eventually. Well, depending on how this goes down, it's going to be in everyone's hands regardless. This thing's going to eventually make landfall for a lack of a better term and um it's gonna throw all sorts of dirt in the air i hate to say it but i think having an extra set of ears might actually be beneficial we've got the ability to have somebody a little bit removed from the situation He's using us, and we need to be able to use him. And I feel like being able to leverage him with the information he has, it's in his best interest if we survive and we succeed. It really is. There's only one other uh, concern that I have, uh, and Aaron's actually going to uh, put up uh, put up a privacy screen. Uh, to keep this uh, to keep this part private um, but uh, she'll say we know that Salem or rabbit has gotten to some of the other syndicate bosses 
presumably at least one of them she's put a, one of those biotic parasites in same that uh, she did with Rolt what if she's got one in Snake and he's a sleeper agent for her that we don't yet know about that even he might not know about if we're going to operate under that no one's safe Everyone that's in the syndicate is then immediately a threat, and we need to find a way out from under Snake immediately. It's only a possibility. I'm not. I don't have any reason to suspect it. But if that's something thing. if something was going to go drastically wrong, it would be that. <laughs> you mean the system-sized space Satan isn't drastically wrong? <laughs> Bad joke. I meant something more. That's the only reason I was I would hesitate to bring him. But I suppose I can't afford to be paranoid about everything. At this point, I don't think we can. We have to have a little faith. Which is odd, considering I'm suggesting having faith in a syndicate boss. But I guess I am. Well, we'll get the ones that matter. Alright, that's all I needed. Thank you. Anytime, Aaron. Dismissed. And uh, Aaron will calm down to engineering next. Um, well, and while she normally would have uh, calmed Ray directly, she actually uh, pauses on that and uh, instead just uh, pings engineering uh, in general and uh, just says captain to engineering. So whether it's Ray or Decimius or um, whoever that pick up. While, while Ray is there, it would be Ray. Decimius has basically fallen into a role of being Ray's assistant. Okay. Uh, he... he... And, like, also a stand-in for Ray when she's gone. Ray, you actually would have noticed that the engine is, like, in the short time Decimius has been on the crew, the engine has been just a dream to work with. Because before, whenever you were on the away team, while you were gone, uh, you know, your your buddy did his best. You know, Wolf Glover, like, he, he's he's been learning, and he tried his best. But, like things would be out of place and usually there'd be some minor issue for you to resolve when you returned like you'd always be like hey while you were gone this happened what do i do but now that decimius is here like every time you get back decimius will be like hey everything's perfect and also i made you some coffee like because <laughs> he actually oh. is competent and able to do your job while you're gone he's so sweet um, Ray is probably actually uh, messing with the engine right now, trying to adjust it for the gravity of the planet we're going to. So she lets she tells Decimius to answer the ping. Okay, yeah. So he'll he'll go uh, go over here and be like, "What can I do for you, Captain?" Decimius, we need to make sure that uh, Adam is hard transferred onto the submersible by the time we arrive at our destination. Can you make that happen? Well, you know, I've been looking at your, uh, your VA for a while, and it's, it's about a hundred times as complicated and big as a VA should be. I can probably physically move the core onto the submersible and hook it up that way i don't think i can digitally transfer it so it it can be done but it's going to be like a hard transfer as in <laughs> we're going to carry him physically onto the sub i think that's the only way we can do it, it, it whatever your va is crazy i've never seen anything like it it's absolutely wild he's one of a kind yeah no kidding some kind of secret alliance stuff something like that Adam, huh. is this is this an acceptable uh, transfer option for you? Be right. gentle, because I assume he is listening. 
Yeah, Adam just says, be gentle. Okay. And, um, and Desimis is like, I'll try my best, buddy. Uh, you're going to be like a thousand pound hunk of metal and circuitry, but I'll try to tell the Krogan to be gentle. And would that, Adam, would that come along with the uh, the side programs you were asking about? Because we have decided to bring those along as well. Uh, it can if you want it to, says Adam. I think so we decided we will... didn't want it to. Okay, I'll bring them. Uh, while I'm gone from the ship, it'll be full manual. So just make sure the crew that you leave behind are aware that they won't have any training wheels anymore. Understood. I think even with the ground crew uh, fully deployed, we've got competent hands at all stations. Maybe the fleshy things will appreciate me more once I'm gone. <laughs> Perhaps. All right. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Decimius. Yeah. So they won't. They won't have auto uh, out of character. Like they. They basically will lose their autopilot. But all they really have to do is like sit in this point in orbit. So it shouldn't be a problem, mm -hmm. assuming nothing happens. All right. Um. She'll, uh, as, as we pass Dissimius, by, uh... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Dissimius will just go over to Ray and say, uh, hey, the captain wants us to hook your VA up to the sub. I don't know about you. I've been looking at it. I don't think there's any way to do it other than literally picking the thing up and putting it in the sub. Do you, oh. I mean... Oh, dang. That was my idea. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown it out there, but I just thought it would be good. I didn't realize it would be impossible to transfer. Oh, no, I mean, it's not impossible to transfer. We just kind of have to do it the old-fashioned way, you know? Oh, well, I, we probably should get to work on that. All the hookups are standard, so as long as, like, your sub isn't an old model, it's new. It should have, you know, like HDMI and everything. It should be fine. <laughs> all right, well, we'll just have to worry about power draw. I don't know how deep in the water we're going to have to go. Uh, that's a good point. Um, I'll run some simulations on the sub to make sure the power is enough for the VA and the subsystems. And if it's not, maybe we can borrow some stuff from the Saratoga, give it a little bit of a jump. Yeah, Wolf, do you think you can go and look for uh, basically redundant systems and see what resources we could possibly have off of those? Uh, Wolf says, oh, we got all kinds of redundant systems. Excellent. Go try to figure out something for a power drain. Yeah. It, he'll be like, yeah, I mean, we could shut the lights off in all the quarters and the mess hall. Uh, we could, like, turn off the water heater for a while. Just nobody takes a shower for a bit. There's all kinds of stuff we could do. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, so he's going to go, like, make a list of just, like, little stuff like that. Like, we don't really need this. We don't really need this, etc. Luxuries. Yeah, exactly. Luxuries. And So uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, everyone was in their bathing suit, and we started playing volleyball. Ray's <laughs> recounting what happened on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, wow, okay. I, I'm sincerely very sad that I missed it. Yeah, and we won. It would have been really nice if everyone had been there to celebrate. Well, congrats. Completely goes go over her head. Uh, real quick, I'll be back. I'm just going to go get started on unhooking your monstrously huge VA. All right, be gentle with him. You say that like your VA is a person. Well, I tell people to be gentle with Tasty. Uh-huh. This, this Simeus Lee has like a look <laughs> like... He's, like, very suspicious. <laughs> if if uh, looked, Ray didn't have out. the math. Yeah. He, I mean, he's not a stupid dude. Like, he's he's looked into it. He's like, what the hell is with this VA? So he's starting to get really sus. But he's like, all right, cool. Yeah, if and Ray didn't gonna, have the math, she would totally give away that she was lying. He heads up the ladder and is like, hey, creepy chick or dude. Can't tell. And uh, Primrose does not acknowledge him. Hey, Krogan, I got something really heavy for you to carry. 
and Adam is like, can anyone but the Krogan carry me, please? Can we, can we not do that? I asked for gentle. You know, I was going to tell you go fuck yourself, but if it means messing with Adam, it'll be my pleasure. Adam is either one Krogan lift or one team lift. That's what it says as, right there on the side of the box. As as Kronk is entering the hallway, Adam is like, all right, so Kronk, can I call you Kronk? Uh, the <laughs> thing with the shower where I kept changing the temperature. It was just a prank, bro. It was just it was just like a joke. Uh -huh. Let's be cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I completely understand. So the enemy is is gonna uh, gonna like basically just unhook, unbolt, like undo all the cables so that Kronk can can physically lift the the big like ten foot long. It's an AI core, like all of you know, mm. it's an AI core, and mm. and put it in the sub. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, I think Aaron was was gonna do something. I just kind of sidetracked you with all this going on. Yeah, no worries. Uh, just like mentioning to uh, to Quincy on our way uh, past that once we uh, deploy the uh, the submersible, that uh, the uh, the the uh, assistance from uh, from Adam is not gonna be online anymore. I'm just making sure Quincy Quincy feels comfortable being able to fly the ship without him. Uh, yeah, Quincy says, uh, I mean, what do I have to do? Just kind of hang out and wait for you guys to get back? That's about the size of it. We'll, uh, probably have stealth systems engaged, so we, you shouldn't have to worry about, uh, any, any hostile yeah, forces I mean, coming in. Staying in orbit, uh, coming in for a pickup and leaving after a drop, that's all easy. Uh, if I end up having to make a jump unassisted... Uh, I, I'm gonna be real with you, Captain. I'm not gonna pretend that I've ever done that. It, it would be a first. Well, so, if you, but if all I'm doing is sitting around, if it does come to something spectacular like that, you do have an uh, an incredible and very knowledgeable co-pilot. Uh, I guess. I mean, look, I know who he is, but he's kind of he's gotten kind of old, and he's not like fully there. I mean, I have all the respect in the world for him, but I don't know if I'd, like, have him do a jump unassisted when he's still kind of... I don't know. He, he, does, he doesn't even want to fly the ship. Like, that's his choice. Like, it's his just choice. an emergency contingency that I'm trying to plan ahead for. Just in case. Besides, he's not a fossil yet. I mean, I guess it's fair. In his prime, he probably pulled shit like that off. He flew with Shepard, did all kinds of crazy junk. And the ship has the benefit of being somewhat aged itself, so a little closer to his generation than anything more modern. I guess, but this ship was designed and built after he disappeared. Still, again, this is not something that I'm expecting to happen. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I'll do my best. Uh, it shouldn't be an issue as long as you know nothing happens. Right. It's a little nerve wracking. Your best is all I can ask for. Thank you. All right. All right. And uh, Aaron will take her uh, her spot on the uh, on the bridge. All right. So we're, we'll engage stealth systems as soon as we're out of FTL. That's all I've got for Aaron for right now. And Decimius is going to finish unhooking Adam. And just as he's unhooking the last thing, Adam is like, Uh! <laughs> and then cuts off. Hey, uh, and, uh, do you want... Uh, I'm using Biotic Enhancement to give me advantage on the strength checks and double my lifting and carrying capacity. You want me to make a check for this? Yeah, yeah, give me an athletics check. Cool. Uh, let's see. It would definitely normally take two or even three people to move this thing. Uh, 17. So, you, just, Simeus does team lift with you with a 17. 
uh, All right, no it, problem. she doesn't contribute very much, but it's it's infinitely easier to carry something if someone's holding the other end of it. Yeah, even if it's just keeping it from being too awkward. He actually he does quite well. Wow. Ah, <laughs> uh, the uh, the 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 dice. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, with Decimius, you're able to get it down to the, the S9 Enzo, and he'll begin to install it, and then he's going to run those tests, like Ray asked. After uh, after running, uh, well, pretty much as soon as he hooks it into the Enzo, uh, like him and he and Kronk are on the Enzo when he does this, and immediately Adam is like, that felt weird. I didn't like that. I did not like, don't. I didn't like that. That was I didn't like that at all. That was weird. You're gonna have to uh, deal with it at least one more time on the way back. Uh, Unless you'd rather okay. just live here on the sub. I like the sub. I might stay on the sub. <laughs> I don't like the terrifying liminal space of being disconnected from everything. I really don't. And uh Decimius is like you programmed your VA with a lot of really useless things to say. I don't understand the practical use of it doing this right now. Well, this is a uh, it's a long term uh, this is a long term travel ship. Um, the pr uh, the primary purpose of it is mostly just to give some sort of personality to the ship to keep the crew from going completely insane and killing each other. He uh, he gives us a unified thing to hate, so we stop hating everyone else. <laughs> give me a deception. <laughs> Can I get an advantage based off of Adam's really, really annoying personality? <laughs> I'll give you advantage. That's actually a really good story. That's a good lie, honestly. Awesome. I need that advantage. I've got a minus one here. Ten. <laughs> uh, Decimius is just like... Humans are weird. They are. Squishy things. And as he's, like, walking back up to the Saratoga with Kronk, he's like... Do you think every human ship has this, like, really inefficient VA to make them feel better? I mean, probably. Have you seen humans? They cry over everything. Huh. Our history books make them out to be a lot more intimidating than this. You'd think. Yeah. So, so then he, he comes up and says, uh, Hey, good news! So, I ran a test, and yeah, the Alliance knows how to build them. Uh, the S9 Enzo has a surplus of power. Plenty for the VA, and then some. Excellent. The that core on that thing is crazy. Yeah, it's very advanced. I've spent many hours looking it over. That's, that's really good. Oh, I'll go ahead and let Aaron know, and... If there's anything else she wants to attach to the ship, how much power draw do you think we have to spare besides? Well, I did notice uh, there were a lot of places where weaponry could be installed. Um, which might explain why it has such a surplus of power. But it doesn't look like the weapons are missing for no reason. Uh, it's It seems to me a little bit like a stealth vehicle. It's intended to, to move silent and fast. It's very small and light and flat. Uh, a lot of these weapon attachment points, if we did install weapons, would greatly reduce its speed and stealth capabilities. So there'd be a trade-off. I was afraid of that. But if we wanted to move some of the Saratoga's weapons onto the sub, it would support them. Uh, it'll just become a much more obvious target in the water if we do that. Okay, well, I'll let Aaron make the final call on that one. Fair we enough. Have, we do have some spare heavy weapons that we might be able to jury rig onto the side of it, too. Perhaps wouldn't draw as much power. Yeah, I mean, power is not really the issue. Uh, the trade-off is mainly just its actual footprint in the water, right? It's uh, The way it's shaped is extremely sleek and smooth and flat. Its propulsion makes almost no movement in the water around it. It is 
actually very resilient to most forms of detection. As soon as we slap a big gun on the side of this thing, that stops being the case. Okay, noted. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no problem. And uh, Ray will contact Aaron and relay that to her. So if we want to throw a gun on the side, like maybe that Gatling gun we got from the trappers, we probably could, but uh, it basically will be reducing mobility for it. Yeah, so no, Aaron's, Aaron's response to, uh, to Ray is that I think uh, speed and stealth is going to be our, our best asset down there. Yeah, I figured that would probably be the best bet. Plus, we don't want to be driving up to whatever these things are. Giant guns. Yeah, from what I understand, even giant guns on this thing wouldn't make a difference if they decided to be hostile. Oh, excellent. David. Sir? You complete the jump and you come into view mm -hmm. of the planet. Uh, there's a number on 2181 Dispoina. Uh, one moment. Pull us over. As soon as they, as soon as we come out of uh, the jump, Aaron Aaron's gonna say, "Engage the emission sink." You got it. As you pull into view of this blue planet, instantly there is a feeling that spreads through the ship and its crew. The first to feel it are anyone with biotics of any kind. Oh, I don't like that. You immediately feel this sort of weird pressure in the air like your like your ears are popping but then eventually the the hairs in the back of your neck and stuff are standing up on on everybody even people who don't have biotics as you pull into like the low orbit of Dispoina. and looking at the planet you don't see anything at all no continents no islands no structures no ships no satellites absolutely nothing it is a barren blue marble nothing but water you can see, based on the cloud formations, turbulent storms ripping up uh, the, the, the ocean all over the planet. But there's no sign of civilization, no sign of life, but you can feel it. There's something in there. Something at the bottom of those oceans. And you can feel it all the way out from space. All right, Helm, take us closer. Hopefully we're getting closer after feeling that, but okay. We need to get close enough to launch the submersible. We were crazy enough to go into Yomi. This is like half that. Bridge to Medbay. I'm sure you're feeling the same thing that uh, that most of us are feeling. If there's any uh, medications you'd recommend to alleviate these effects. Please keep me posted. Faye actually uh, answers and says, What we're feeling is a biotic field. I don't think this was here when my mother visited Despoina. She didn't report anything like this. They might be on guard. This Maybe they know be... their little brother's coming back. 
I don't know how many of them are still alive on that planet, but they they could all be projecting a biotic field in unison as a kind of maybe it's a warning, uh, like a stay away, leave us alone, a deterrent. It definitely feels very unpleasant, which is probably by design. Uh... All right. Helm, just as long as we can, as long as we can tolerate it, take us in. Yeah, it just it just feels uncomfortable. It's it's like, it's like they're projecting this sensation of you not wanting to be on this planet. Like mm -hmm. it constantly feels uncomfortable, maybe like even a little bit nauseous, just as a like, go away. It's a very unwelcome feeling. It's not an attack. It's just a dissuasion. Yeah, exactly. Push on. All right. As the Saratoga descends through the atmosphere, the ship comes to rest above turbulent, stormy waters. Gigantic tidal waves, some of them big enough to swallow cities, are just crashing into one another. There's no land here, there's nothing on the surface, and it's clear why. Uh, nothing could ever be built here, not in any practical way. The Spoina is... The entire planet is an ocean, and it is extremely inhospitable. And in fact, Faye says it's got... this. It seems like it's gotten worse in the last few decades. The The... I don't remember the storms being this bad. Of course, it's no problem for the Saratoga being a fucking spaceship, but, like, you would not want to be out here on a boat or something. You definitely could never build anything, like a floating island or what, or anything like that. You could never, like, build a permanent home here because of the storms and waves. You'd have to build it underwater. What do we estimate the uh, ease of recovery for the submarine when we're done here, if, if these conditions uh, persist? obnoxious it, it's not going to be like a problem but it it will you will not be able to retrieve the submarine quickly and cleanly it will be a process like it's going to take time and effort to retrieve the submarine from these conditions All right so if you so if you have to leave in a hurry you'll be in trouble all right david take us down to um appropriate altitude to launch the Enzo and then hand off the, the helm to uh, Quincy all right everyone else to the uh, to the submersible mr. ways you have the bridge stand by to come pick us up when we need it understood captain uh, and Aaron will uh, will head down to the uh, to the Enzo Start getting, I'll start getting suited up. Follows after her. All right. Everyone, make uh, sure you have the right, um, uh, the right underwater gear. It's all sized specifically for each of us. Kronk holds up a suit significantly smaller than himself and goes, so not this one. That would be mine. Hands one that's three times her size. This one's yours. Thanks for the trade-off, Red. You're welcome, big guy. Besides, this will fit your hips better. All right, here we are, the map of the Enzo. Uh, note the staircases connect to the lower floor. Uh, these five seats to your right are like the, co the controls. Uh, this is your power core. This middle part is seating around uh, the AI core. And then you can take the stairs downstairs where there are some areas where 
uh, you know, crewmates can like, there's like a workstation down here and some places to sit and, and work on things. And this is kind of like a cargo bay. So here, here you are. Looks There's like some, your submersible. Uh, some sleeping racks as well. Indeed. Yep. There are, there are uh, a couple of rudimentary sleeping racks. Not enough for everyone. But if you slept in shifts, you, you could use the sleeping quarters. Okay. All right. David, Bay is going to take up uh, one of these seats and be basically Intel. Like, like, um, what do you call it in uh, Bridge Simulator? Operations. Yeah, she's going to be like operations. All right, David. Sorry, go ahead. Helm's all yours. Yeah, sure. Why not? I had submarine to my resume. All right. Let's see, what other stations are up here? So each of the... The middle one is always going to be... Like, the center one is, is the pilot, but the mm -hmm. other ones are... Uh, they can be hooked up to anything. Okay. So they could be whatever they need to be. Like, navigation, weapons, whatever. There's also, like, this seating back here around the table, like the semicircle seating, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to just basically hang out. All right, so yeah, but yeah, taking somebody on weapons, uh, Ray, you, you've got you've got engineering handled. Yeah, how much of my knowledge of engineering would actually transfer over to this, or am I immediately just like, well, we're boned? So, admittedly, um, that gets into uh, science fiction is silly. Technically, uh, your experience on learning how to work on like Quarian spaceships shouldn't have remotely translated to even, like, another model of Corian ship that's, like, five years off, let alone, like, a human-made ship. Like, you, you should have had no idea what... Because, it, you know, this shit is specific. But because it's science fiction, we just kind of, like, go, whatever. And at the end of the day, a submarine's not that different from a spaceship. It's just, like, it has, it has more to worry about pressure than a vacuum. But it, it is, like, just a fucking airtight container with an engine so i would say because we're playing mass effect you're good uh <laughs> even though it doesn't make a lot of sense that is just kind of the hand wave that all sci-fi tends to make which is like <laughs> it's a it's a it's a vehicle with an engine the engineer knows how to work with it kind of like in futurama exactly yeah eh, they're all the same <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's good. At least we're not absolutely boned yeah. if something horrible happens. No. If I was going to have you not know how to work on the submarine, then honestly, this should have come up when you were placed on a human ship and you were like, <laughs> oh, it's a whole different species. There's no way this engine bay is going to be remotely similar to anything <laughs> I've learned. Hey, to be fair, Koreans do have an advantage in that because most of their ships are taken from other species. That's true. That that's fair, yeah. But you are a hundred percent correct. It makes no yeah. fucking sense. <laughs> yeah, that would that would not have made any sense. Uh, so yeah, uh, to stations. Basically, everyone put your tokens where you would be. You can like, if you want to go like take a bed or hang out at the table, read a book, take a take up a station in the front. I mean, there's four more seats in the front. Just you know, get get yourselves where you're going. I think David's in the middle up here. It'd be. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. We mean this middle, right? <laughs> yeah. The the center seat in the front where you are are you're driving the sub, right, David? No, no, what? No, I don't know how to drive. What the fuck was that? Please tell me you are sober. So <laughs> Please tell yeah, me you're sober, Lieutenant. <laughs> what do you mean? Just My making God. sure. I just I don't get a hang on. We're good. I'm I imagine Kronk has his feet up on the table, probably. <laughs> um, Ez, where is Eon going to hang out during this excursion? Uh, sorry, I, 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 Amanda was just coming back from the store. I was helping her bring in some groceries. Um, where are weapons positioned? Uh, just 
the remaining console that's available can be hooked up to weapons. He'll he'll take his feet down off of the table. Hey, kind of all the... you come back here just so I'm not alone. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> what are you spooked, Ray? I'm just saying, if a hole gets torn in the hole or something, and I'm by myself, I'm gonna be absolutely fucked. So, <laughs> if a hole if a to hole gets torn in the hull at that depth we're going, we're all fucked. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, the first thing you notice that's different with the S9 Enzo compared to a spaceship is there's no windshield. Uh, no glass. In front of you is just metal, like control panels and stuff. There's, oh. a, a, there's a bunch of monitors that are, okay. that are showing all kinds of things, and uh, it occurs to you that uh, you're going to need to be using, uh, you know, Things like sonar and thermal and all of that to for uh, detection down here. There's no uh, there's no window. A very oh, gift align philo design philosophy. Just like old school oh, submarines. And uh, Faye says uh, it is an alliance stealth vehicle, so probably this is just. Uh, Go all in on that, I imagine. Well, also, at that depth, windows will be a very big structural weakness. And, and Faye is like, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. That's right. The windows probably weren't possible to do with how deep we're going. As we'll probably be relying on your, uh, your senses, let us know if you feel a uh, particularly strong tug one direction or the other. Did I say as I'm we'll, an Eon? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, we'll do. Eon. <laughs> we'll Adam, do, let you know. how are you doing? Can you feel outside the ship? Is there all the systems working as you'd expect? Uh, are, you feeling, uh, are you feeling floaty, Adam? <laughs> I'm not feeling great. Uh, yeah, all the systems are on, I guess. Why... Why am I in a tiny boat? I don't like this. Consider Creepy. It, consider it your first away mission, Adam. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything's operational. I'm all wet. I don't like it. And Faye is like, your VA is programmed to say a lot of really weird things. Yeah. Personality subroutines. Huh. It's about keeping the crew sane on long trips. <laughs> this is Kronk's, like, ongoing lie about that. It's a story. <laughs> well, David, uh, you do you take it deeper? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know you're, you know you're going real deep for this. Uh, yeah, that I am. What what are the uh, what are the sensors like on here? Am I gonna have to actively ping to detect anything out there, or are we able to get anything passively? Oh, never mind. I hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So the <laughs> I the, love that. The ship has it, uh, the most advanced sonar and thermal. And it might sound sur surprising to still be using sonar, uh, but, like, it's just really good. Yeah. We're still using sonar today. Like, why wouldn't they use sonar? It it works. Yep. There's not a there's not a better alternative, so... It's all about sound. It's, like, super advanced sci-fi sonar, so it's very good. Mm-hmm. But you'd also have thermal sensors, which are, which are significantly reduced range compared to the sonar. I'm gonna go ahead and roll my planning dice. Not a bad idea. Okay. All right. As you guys head deeper into the depths of this point is ocean, you hear the hull of the S9 Enzo gently creak and groan as the water pressure increases. It is a little bit unnerving, but it's not out of the ordinary. 
That's what the ship was designed to do. It's it's working exactly as intended. It just you can tell that even though you can't see outside the submarine, you can tell that with every passing moment, thousands of tons of water are uh, being added above you. Ops keep us surprised of uh, whether or not we start approaching crush depth. I'm not sure what the uh, the test step for this vessel is. Don't want to accidentally pop like an egg. Adam says, well, the good news is that uh, the crush depth for this ship is deeper than anything on Despoina. It's actually deeper than anything discovered so far. All right. Uh, but the deeper we go, the more... Uh, I don't know if fragile is the word, but the more pressure on the ship, the less it'll take to breach the hull. Because it'll already be holding so much up. We're going to get very fragile as we... Uh, if we actually end up going as deep as this ocean goes. But we won't get crushed by the water. Understood. Speed and stealth. Helm, if, we, if you start detecting anything out there, make sure to give it a wide berth. Until we know what it is. And I'm watching the uh, sensors to see like if, if, if we detect anything out there after some time the thermal sensors and the sonar both suddenly indicate something in front of the Enzo like passing in front of it that was not there before and whatever it is is big enough to pretty much completely block that side of the sonar and the thermal it reaches like the edges of the thermal range something that's like hundreds of feet wide and long just passed in front of the Enzo distance it's a good distance away and it doesn't seem to be uh, it's, it's not like heading towards you or anything it's almost moving like perpendicular to your path. All right, give it space. David, because you're the pilot, you get to roll the stealth yeah. check. Give me a 1d20 uh, plus 15. Okay. 1d20 plus 15. Let's go. Don't fuck David. up. Okay. Yeah, you're, you, you, you even maybe, you maybe even like, Lower the engines down, like like bring everything down a little bit to stay quiet. Uh, Eon, you had detect biotics going, right? No, no, I don't have. No, I'm okay. Just... Not anymore. Well, you guys don't feel anything different in the biotic field while this is happening. Like no change to it. Do we have like a rough estimate of how far away this thing is from us? Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, like a couple hundred feet. The tech biotics is a is a uh, does have a ritual tag, so you can cast it without uh, spending biotic points. I don't have the actual spell, is the thing. Oh, you don't. Okay. Right, it's something I needed to. Something I messed up. I needed uh, to change. I just forgot to talk to. No, that that's quite yeah, right. Bay sees the readings and looks over at Aaron and says, could this be what we're looking for? I was about to ask you the same thing. I don't... I don't know how to tell. It's big. It's huge. I'm... See if we can generate a, a physical profile on it. See what the shape is. Because if there's large predators out there, I definitely want to avoid them. How would we make contact with the Leviathans once we do identify them? If its presence is out there, I'm sure I could talk to them. 
Are we not sure that it's going to make contact with us first? If it's anything like our friend, you imagine that it would probably reach out to us when it first met us, if for no, no other reason than to kill us. Perhaps. <clears throat> Might not detect this. From what I know of, from what we know of these leviathans, they'll detect us. They probably already know we're here. Let's keep a wide right. berth from anything that is otherwise unidentified. Bay says, uh, if we want to get an image of this thing, I can, I can use the sonar to basically draw its surface, but it's going to require us to get a little closer and basically sit near it for a moment. Is it moving? looks like it's moving a little bit but it's not not fast all right david see if you can get close enough to it quietly do what i can all right. be ready to run <laughs> if it starts moving towards us too quickly So you pull the you, you start to pull the the submersible in towards whatever this identified thing is slow and quiet so tempted to use whisper when we get within 120 right. feet <laughs> That's what... i've got a scary, scary thought who wants to sit outside and uh Say what they see. If we have to get within a hundred feet, that's a little too close for comfort. I wasn't gonna say I wanted to go sit on top of this thing while we were moving, so I'm glad I'm not the only <laughs> one who had this stupid idea. Yeah, Let's go do it. I'm just saying. Gosh, I, I at can least, back I at least want to stay like like a kilometer or more away from it. Yeah, uh, once you're a little over a kilometer from it, Faye will say, "Okay, it's enough. If we can hold position for for just give me like one minute." And I'll have it. All right, make it so. All right, she starts to uh, she starts to image it basically with the sonar. And this is the actual sound on the bridge. No one's talking while she's doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then finally, the image she took pops up. Oh. Oh. And Faye says, it's looking at us. And then you guys lose it. You feel the ship move as it moves and your sonar loses it. It like goes under, like deeper than you. David, make us evasive again. Get us away from it. That didn't, Roger look, that. Like, didn't look like what we were looking for. Roger that. It didn't look good. I'm not sure what know. it looked like. It was holding still. That's not a bad thing. Faye says it was holding still because it was looking at us. And that's a big version of Iron Lung. Yeah, I, I was going to say. I think it was trying to figure out what we are. It didn't look like what we're looking for. This is probably some kind of creature. Again, right? Faye is the xenobiologist, right? So she's mm -hmm. so she's she's like, this is probably some kind of animal. Uh, judging by the teeth, it's predatory. I think it was trying to figure out if we're edible or not because it's never seen anything that looks like this. Hopefully, it decided not. I mean, we're a lot smaller than it, so. We have a shot at not being worth its time. Do we have any um, sonar ping on where it is now? Uh, it's just gone. It went deeper than you, and you lost it, but you can try to find it. 
Uh, that would be on. That would actually be on Faye. On operations, right? So let's see. Well, if it went deeper, I think we go a little bit shallower just to put a little more distance between us and it before we resume our descent. Keep an eye on those on that on those sensors. She says, "Whatever it is, it, it can move pretty fast. It's out of our sonar range, I think." I think the important thing is to just be not where it remembers us to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put some distance, and then we'll resume descending. They kind of leans forward on her hands, like putting her knee, her elbows on the console. This planet is entirely water. It's like a deep sea ecosystem that's been developing undisturbed for thousands of years. It stands to the reason that the predators that have survived and evolved on Despoina would be not only gigantic, but very good at what they do. She's kind of talking to herself, but in doing so, basically giving like the most terrifying, like quiet monologue to the to everyone in the cockpit. Crikey. None of that is reassuring. <laughs> Doesn't seem like anything in here is using sonar, though. So. Yeah. So far, you haven't picked up any sonar, but your own, yeah. I'm, and I'm not feeling anything out of the ordinary. Right. Are we below the light penetration threshold yet? Oh yeah, it's it's now you're deep enough that it's become very dark. Out, of course you can't really tell because you have no windows, but you would know from like your depth sensors that you're well past where light would reach. Well, with as dark as it is. The only thing they could track by would be sound. Turn off the pinging. Let's go blind for a little bit. Keep the engine yeah, as quiet not as you blind can. Enough. When you, you turn off the ping, the last ping that you sent picks up this thing jaws open beneath the sub. At the edge of your sonar range. Pull ahead. Quiet as you can. You suddenly hear a metallic grinding sound as though something just slid against the side of the sub. Helm, dive. Alright, uh, give me a pilot check, David. Okay, what would that be? Is that an actual skill? It's one of your, uh, your, like, vehicle proficiencies. Right, I'm trying to remember what you that can give me. On. You can give me space vehicles, I'll allow it. Okay, well, if that's the case, then. Yeah, I'll just that let you do be... that. Okay. Yeah, you dip the sub and immediately dive. Give it five seconds down, then slow to half speed. Roger. Just to keep, just to keep it quiet. Sound wasn't mildly upsetting at all. Engineering, any damage? Zan, any damage? <laughs> Give me a technology check. All right. Did we implement the new way that Corians work? Yes. I don't suppose you have technology over there, Eon. Uh, no. All right. I'm here for moral still, support, though. Does anybody, still, else, does anybody in here have technology? Oh, thank Does God. Adam have technology? I didn't roll a crit right. fail. Still rolled really bad. But You find uh, absolutely no damage at all to the hull. 
No, we're not taking on any water or anything. I think we're okay. Anything to the... Maybe uh, our, any, our, our... any shield damage? Not even uh, that. Yeah. No, no shield damage. So whatever we hit, we didn't hit hard enough to actually damage us. All right, that was a close call. Faye says, I don't think it's gone. I think it's curious. Certainly not. It could have attacked us, but it didn't. It's being careful. Like it's been taught to be afraid of something. It doesn't know what we are, and it's trying to figure it out. Keep us running silent for the time being, David. You're really the, just the moral support center right now, aren't you? The trick to not being eaten by a significantly larger predator is to make it decide that we're not worth the effort it would take to take uh, to take us down. So we either want to be fat, we either want to be too fast for it to bother with, or too. Uh, I have a problem to eat. Yeah, so we either want to get evasive or shoot it. Say the word, I'll stand on top and throw <laughs> stuff at it. What's the um, possible firing arc on those torpedoes? Can we set them up to fire um, behind us? Uh, They don't have that much of an arc, but you could... You could basically launch them with very little propulsion and then pass them and leave them behind almost like mines like setting them to arm after you're you've moved on david set us on a straight course Bay says i don't know okay. we, we need to be very careful with how we handle this because we only get one chance to interact with this thing. It could kill all of us immediately. It doesn't know that. It's being overly cautious. As in, it shouldn't need to be this cautious for how big it is. That means there's something else in this ocean that's scarier. My thought is if we leave a torpedo in our wake and get it to either bite it or run into it, it's big enough it won't kill it but maybe a little sting will dissuade it from pursuing us any further. Make us not worth the effort given our size relative to it. It's possible. I don't, know. I don't expect to kill it. I just, want, uh, I just want it to think that we're too small and annoying to be worth it. Yeah, not trying to kill it, just trying to sting it a little bit. Like, I'm, I'm actually just kind of leaning on actual predator logic. There's a reason that you can't get a that you can't get a tiger to chase a laser pointer. It's too small and annoying to be worth the food. All right, this is Faye. It's your ship, Captain. Let's turn the sonar back on. See if we can see if we can spot it, but not go looking for it. The first ping picks it up 40 feet behind the sub. Facing the sub. Just tailing us? Yeah, it's following you. It's about 40 feet behind and gaining. Alright. Drop both torpedoes and accelerate to full. Let's see if we can get this, make this thing think twice. Roger that. I'll wait for the torpedoes launch. So, uh, Kronk and uh, Shepard, uh, I want each of you to roll 1d20 plus your proficiency bonus and your dexterity modifier. I'm sure there's a fancy way to do that. I don't know what that is. Actually, Kronk, do you have heavy weapon proficiency? Yes, I do. Okay, yes. So you would both get your proficiency and dex mod. Those are two numbers on your sheet. So your proficiency is three, and it looks like your dex mod is four for Shepard. So mm -hmm. give me 1d20 plus seven for Shepard. Okay. I'm going to use uh, something 
adaptive. I'm re-rolling that. Okay. Because um, I don't like that. That that's. And Kronk, was that your inspiration to roll? No, it man? it shouldn't have been with advantage. Understood. All right, so you got a seventeen. Kronk got a ten. Uh, so you guys basically attempt to launch the torpedoes as straight and as short of a trajectory as possible, so that the sub can pass them. Which is a little bit advanced of a thing to do. It's not like quite what it's designed for. It's it's a creative maneuver. Um, Shepard's able to pull it off pretty well. Bronk ends up overshooting a little bit. The result is that uh, as you pass the torpedoes, uh, Shepard's arms pretty much in the thing's face, whereas Kronk's ends up actually getting caught by the current and pulled off to the side a bit in arms, uh, like at the side of its head or something like that, like a little to the back. Um, but assuming you detonate the torpedoes as the thing passes them, uh, all of you would feel the pressure wave as they go off not that far behind you. And, uh, let's see. As soon as they go Damn off, Aaron's going to um, direct David to dive again. So hopefully this thing might lose us in the uh, in the shockwave. Alright. Uh, so the shield takes... Uh, the shield of your sub takes 11 damage from the shockwave of the torpedoes, because they went off very close to you. Well, close for torpedoes. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so after it goes off, Aaron's going to uh, tell David to dive again. All right, uh, give me a space vehicles check, David. Nice. All right, yeah. yeah, you immediately dip and you dive, and your sonar picks up this thing passing over you. Uh, its sense is basically blinded by the explosions of the torpedoes, so it just keeps going in a straight line. You go under it, and it passes you. As it's passing over you, you get a much better idea of the shape of its body, finding that it is some kind of massive sea serpent. Mm. It's it's very that what you saw was its head, but it's like a long serpent like creature, which Faye says like, okay, that's definitely not what we were looking for. Like for sure now. I agree. In any case, it just keeps going full speed in the direction you guys were, and you straight dive. As a result, uh, after a few moments, uh, it leaves your sonar range, and you continue to go deeper. Aaron exhales for what feels like the first time in, in like, minutes. <laughs> Well, we, we've certainly lost track of it. Hopefully it lost track of us. Let's hope so. We'll keep the we'll keep the pinging active until we spot something else. Do you know about how deep we'll need to go to find what we're looking for, Doctor? I think they're at the bottom. I can't know for sure, and it is, after all, a planet... But the coordinates I directed you to touch the sub down are around the same area that my mother planned to touch down with Shepard. This should be about right. Of course, that was over 20 years ago. It's possible they've moved. And if they moved, then we're looking for a needle in a planet bigger than earth sized ocean let's well, hope they're still here no reason to alter course then continue descending as you descend your sonar begins to pick various things up around you 
little moving signatures much smaller smaller than your sub smaller than a person even like maybe a couple feet across but they're all over the place they don't seem to take notice of your sub or or bother you at all whatever they are it's just like some big school or swarm of something that you're passing through well, small or not, we will still want to keep a wide berth from them. Give them, give them their space. A lot of small things can be about as deadly as a big thing. If they put their mind to it. Eventually, after a long time of diving and the hull of the S9... Enzo groaning and creaking loudly. Long after leaving behind any sign of life above you, your sonar picks up the ocean floor beneath your sub, at like the edge of the sonar range beneath you. You've reached the bottom. All right. Oh, wow, this water ball does have a bottom. Couldn't bring us to stop then. What now, Doctor? Well, if the Leviathans still live here, they probably noticed us when we entered orbit. We could wait, see if they come out, or we could look for them try to indicate the reason for our presence in some way. We're not picking them up on sonar, so they aren't physically around us right now, but they could still be here somewhere. How far? Pretty sure me, Aaron, and Eon can all uh, reach out a little bit. Start thinking happy thoughts. Start thinking greeting thoughts. He's suggesting that anyone who has it might use Whisper to reach out telepathically to whatever's around us. <clears throat> yeah, I can uh, increase the range of it. I was going to ask, how lo how far out does the sonar go? Cause... Um... Give me a sec. If it's a call over a kilometer, then that's going to be further than any of our whispers can get. Maybe, maybe it's just a matter of projecting oh, thoughts really far. as best we can. Eon, you're the most biotically sensitive. See if you can just think really hard about the reason no. why we're here. <laughs> I'm right. going to say you, you. you have probably very long range on this i was looking up like what's the longest range on a modern sonar and um it looks like 74 kilometers is how far they've gotten these suckers and oh that's, wow like current modern day so your sci-fi sub probably even as small as it is it probably even has maybe a hundred kilometer range on the sonar okay well eon will Focus her mind and let out good vibes, good thoughts. Did anyone picking anything up? Just, just because Kronk will also just use Whisper as well to reach out with, like, you know, general readings. Well, also thoughts of why we're here. They might be yes. far more interested in that. Pictures of space Satan abound. Uh, impending doom, I will let that out. Mm -hmm. The smell of impending doom. Does this thing... So in the Shadow Broker DLC, they have little drones that go outside when you go onto his ship, and they can, like, to, like, check for damage on the exterior of the ship. Does this thing have something similar to that, that I could send Tasty out? Yeah, you can send Tasty out. Okay. Would Tasty be able to withstand this pressure? Probably not. Uh, I mean, is he a hologram or no? That's the real question, right? Yeah. I guess that's the real question. I mean, you're at the bottom of the bottom of the ocean, so I would say that like, mm, 
what you're describing probably I'm I'm gonna be inconsistent. I'm gonna I'm gonna contradict myself and say actually you're at the bottom of the ocean. Probably nothing like that could survive, basically. Okay. Just just because okay. of how incredibly deep you are. No, that makes sense. But if we could get them out, then we'd have actual eyes outside. So I just figured I'd ask. I'll be the eyes. We'll give it maybe half an hour. If we don't hear anything, we'll start looking a little more proactively. Eventually, after a long time of just kind of sitting there and sending out your vibes. By then, Aaron would probably be here. <laughs> Don't need everybody at full battle readiness the whole, yeah. the whole way through. Eventually, finally, all of you on the S9 Enzo hear a voice inside of your heads collectively. That voice is heard by each of you in your native language. Uh, like whatever, whatever your you know the first language you learned, uh, which you all have like universal translators, so it's it's not been it's not like an issue. But this is different. It's like you're perceiving it as, in fact, it would I would go so far as to say it sounds like your own voice talking, mm. as well. And it says, "Leave this place." Aaron, you like, all hear it at the same time. Yeah, Aaron like like looks up and look looks around at everybody else to, like you know, if everybody else is having the the same reaction. Um She'll uh, she'll get up come back over here and say, Doctor, how do we communicate back? Do we just think? Or is there anything on sonar? Um there's nothing on sonar, and I have no idea. Bronk is I'm... just going to to, uh, to speak back in whisper. Yeah. We bring warnings of danger. Your exiled one is come is returning. Yeah, and Eric's going to shut her eyes and more just like try to put imagery at the at the front of mind suddenly the sonar shuts itself off that's not good ray is checking life support life support's <laughs> all fine okay uh the actual switch for the sonar was physically switched off in like on the console Aaron's like leaving, leaving it. The ship groans slightly as something wraps around the outside of it. I think someone is angry. A voice inside your head, but this time not yours, but its own. A sort of. Uh, deep echoing uh, alien voice what are these strange visions you bring to us and Aaron will uh, think back as a uh... As prominently as she can. She doesn't have whisper, but um, seems that they can, like, see at least what we have on the on the surface. Um, if he's going to um, think, we encountered this at the edge of our galaxy, it, and it is 
coming back. As it speaks, you all receive a flash of the Leviathan's appearance in all of your minds. Like, with each word that it utters, you can see it in your heads. And it looks as pictured. Basically a reaper, but, like, an organic creature. That's what the reapers are, were made to look like. And it says... These memories must be fabrications. He is not real. Oh, he's real. If you're as powerful as we expect you to be, you can look inside us and see the truth of the matter. We have seen it. We only survived because it let us go. It wanted us to tell you that it was coming. Its words were that it wanted your fear to ripen. You bring us lies and fabrications. Then its voice is interrupted by another voice in your heads. Let them speak. They bring us true memories. And then another leviathan goes, No. They are false prophets. They will drive us from one another. They bring the old ways. And suddenly, there's Leviathans arguing it on the group call. <laughs> <laughs> they're all in your head, like, arguing. And I eventually, imagine those blades are going all around. <laughs> yeah, and eventually one of them very loudly says, We shall hear them out either way. And we're going to go on break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, have your audience. you have your audience with the leviathans when Yay. they get back oh boy <laughs> Yay! that picture didn't creep me out when you pulled up both of those things from under the water by the way thanks for that Zan <laughs> what this guy this friendly fellow god damn it Zan I fucking hate you what you're gonna do it again just to be a dick, aren't you? I know his, you're gonna do it again. His name is Charlie. Well, Charlie sucks. <laughs> All right. Let's go talk to the creepy underwater reaper thing. Well, you guys are in your submarine. Uh, your sonar is shut off, so you, you're basically blind. But uh, judging by the voices in your head and the groaning of the metal of your ship, you have become surrounded by leviathans outside the submarine that you cannot see with your eyes but that you can see with your minds All and of this. one of them uh, finally ends the <clears throat> dispute between the various leviathans by declaring with some level of authority we will hear them out Aaron will uh, think Allowed, I guess, is the best. Uh, best Basically, thing I can do yeah. Um, she'll think aloud. Um, as factual an accounting as I can, as I can make, is that it existed in a void of darkness on the edge of the galaxy, consuming uh, anything within it, and turning the people that it that it consumed into some uh, dark um, extension of its will and she'll bring forth the uh, the images of the uh, the thing they fought on the on the ship and the only reason we survived was because it let us go it poses a threat to the galaxy and all those who live in it and all we want is to stop it. And we feel that you are our best hope of being able to do that. Maybe not through direct intervention, but anything that you can do to help us or tell us or at least teach us of what this thing is 
would be helpful. We have no intention of exposing you to the galaxy or bringing others here. Our coming here is something of a, a desperate move, but it's the only chance that we have to stop it. After a pause, one of the Leviathan says, We all know what that looks like in their visions. Another Leviathan says, Fiction. That's a fiction. It hits really fucking hard for a fiction. How could we even come up with something like this? Something that none of us knew anything about. Something that you knew about. Something, it makes zero sense. Something that you consider fiction, we would not be able to even comprehend this clearly. Mere moments Finally. ago, most of us thought you were fiction. Very well, says one of them. For now, we shall set aside arguments of whether these memories are real or fabricated. I shall share with you what I know. Aaron's opening her mind to whatever they want to send her way. We have existed before the fleeting dream of your kind graced the first dust of matter in this universe. All species that have come to be have done so after our own and have existed only in service to our kind. We lay hidden dormant only due to our own mistakes driven into the shadows by our own creations even in their absence we find utility in this secrecy our history stretches back back so far that every planet that any of your kind have ever lived on our history predates those rocks even existing in the shape that they are now but like the history of all kinds the further back you go the more muddy the waters become The ability to verify facts. It grows more difficult with each millennia. Going back near what you might consider the dawn of time, we don't have anything resembling a true verified history. The ancient knowledge of our kind collapses into myth and legend into archaic superstition and religion useless things that we have long tossed aside among these mythologies of our kind there is one which predates most of the stars in this galaxy. It is a creation myth. A myth which purports to explain the birth of this universe and our kind. For superior as we may be, we too 
do not know for sure where we came from. That is the fate of all living things. It is the unsolvable mystery of existence. A mystery which religion claims to solve. An easy answer to a question that has no truth. In this mythology, an intelligent designer made our kind as his servants to oversee the fate of his creation. As the majority of the beings we are speaking to are human, we will use human religious terms so that you might understand our meaning. In this mythology, we, the Leviathans, might be comparable to the angels in your first testament. And in this mythology, there is an angel that fell. Its name is Amos, the betrayer, the one who went against the creator deity. For his crimes, he was banished to the far reaches of space, passed into the infinite darkness between galaxies. But even then he did not die, separated from all galaxies, from all planets, all systems, floating in an infinite black void of nothing. Almost persisted, his hatred fueling biotic power which rivaled that of the god that created us. He became a sort of antagonistic feature in our mythology, a figure that existed in this dark, empty abyss as a mirror image of our creator God. Your human religion might equate Amos to Satan. As I explained, in the beginning, this is widely considered fiction by all of our kind today. No Leviathan has believed our creation mythology in tens of thousands of years. Sorry, I got my... That's actually, as a DM, I messed up. It'd be way more than that. It'd be like hundreds of thousands. Hold on. Millions. Millions. It'd Ooh. definitely be millions. No, it'd be billions. We keep it, it. Okay, big numbers are hard. Literally, big numbers are just hard for the human brain to. It'd be billions. That you can't I, I, I literally Googled the age of Earth. Is there, okay, yeah. Earth is 4.5 billion years old. So th th it would be billions. It, it'd be like no Leviathans believe this religion in billions of years. Like longer than the Earth has existed. It's not trillions. Yeah, quite possibly trillions. Big numbers are hard for the human brain to even, like, wrap around. It, it When you get to a big enough number, it's so hard to fucking, like, visualize and even, like, comprehend the scope of it. But, yeah. How, how long have you three been down here? There are many more than three of us down here. This point is the new home of the Leviathans. And we have existed here since the first, and the, the Leviathan kind of hesitates as though looking for something in your mind, and then says, Reaper attacked. They were like fishing for what your word is for the, the thing. Did, did your kind create the Reapers? indirectly 
we created the entity that created the Reapers. It was not our intention. Things spiraled out of control. If we are to be given the benefit of the doubt, how do we stop this this space Satan? We do not. Giving you the benefit of the doubt, if this is Amos, then his biotic powers rival that of the creator deity. He can build or tear apart planets with his thoughts. We are as lambs to his slaughter and your kind are like fleas on the bodies of lambs compared to him. And then one of the Leviathans says, we must leave this galaxy. We must leave and find another. It is no longer safe. Wait, wait. Why why is he choosing now? Is it because the Reapers are gone? We are still acting under the benefit of the doubt, as you said. That is to say, we are not sure we even believe this is real yet, but if it is, how would we know his motivations or reasoning? He well, did say I, something about the he did say something about metal guardians being gone. Yes, that's that's where my point was coming from. If he was afraid of the Reapers, then that means he has reason to be afraid of us. We destroyed the Reapers. And he's not coming he's not just coming to our planet, he's coming to speak with some of the people from our, our galaxy. He's coming to speak with some of the people from our galaxy. So he obviously thinks he needs help. I I, I, I don't think he's as all-consuming as you seem to think he is. One of the Leviathans says, Of course. And then, and then another one goes, Yes, I see what you mean. That could work. And one of them says, It's too risky. We should just leave. We shouldn't stay here. If there is anything that can be done, we're grasping at straws here. Very well. Tiny fleas on the backs of lambs. I shall tell you what we might do were we to defend this galaxy, which I can assure you will not be our course of action. The Reapers drove us into hiding, largely because of what they were. Despite our great biotic power, the greatest power biotics wield is over the organic mind. There is something that exists as a great counter to our power. If Amos was going to fear anything, he would have feared synthetics. The Reapers may have posed a threat to him because synthetics cannot be swayed, controlled, rewritten the way that an organic brain can. And another Leviathan says, indeed, he would share the same weakness as us. But to create the Reapers again would take far too much time and the consequences. Another one says, The Geth are gone. There is no salvaging them either. This galaxy is a lost cause. We should make preparations to leave at once. Wait a minute. What about Edie? If she survived. 
She must have survived to some extent, or else Cerberus, or what was left of them, wouldn't have chosen to keep her. That might be the key. An AI constructed from salvage Reaper tech might be our best place to start. So uh, definitely the quickest solution. Salvaging something like that and then creating something like that. We don't have the time. We might not, but we ha might have folks who can uh, do things rather rapidly. That's true. Synthetics, says the Leviathan, are and will always be the natural enemy of biotics. They are naturally immune to much of our power. Perhaps there is a sliver of a chance that armed with this knowledge, you tiny things might find some scrap of salvation but our kind will not be here to witness it we are leaving we understand and we thank you very much for your counsel this information will probably be very helpful to us thank you great ones wait you're just gonna leave This galaxy is no longer safe for us, and we do not have faith that there is time to create a sufficient synthetic force to oppose Amos. What's to say he's not here for you? He would just follow you anyways. You would just up and leave us? Any sort of defense that you had have? And just run? Don't you bother, Eon. They've been running and hiding for billions of years. You know, we, my people, think so highly of what we thought was a myth. And this is, this is it? We've been right. running and hide, hiding for billions of years. I think cowardice is all their species knows. Your incense. Your insults roll off of us like rain on a great edifice of stone. You are as nothing but ants beneath our feet. Your lives are fleeting and meaningless, and your opinions shall have no sway on our course of action. They're, well, I have... yeah. they're powerful and ancient enough if... to decide their own course. They have more than earned that if right. They... We... If they truly uh... think us so insignificant... Then the next thing that happens after Amos rolls through here, is obviously no concern, is he just continues steamrolling till he gets to you anyways. So, incons so insignificant, yet we were the ones that took down the Reapers that you did nothing about, that you left behind. We are well aware that your kind eliminated the Reaper threat. And you why still do look you down think, on us. Why do you think we gave you this information? Your success and the safety of your galaxy means nothing to us, but by telling you what we've told you, we may have armed you with the ability to delay him. We're grateful for your service and dying to save us time. <laughs> and there please, it is. Please scream and writhe as long as you can. And then you guys hear the ship groan as it's released. And you can hear like big things moving away in the water. If they still, hey, Zan. Just in case they're still like attached to our thoughts, uh, Aaron, Aaron will say in, uh, in parting, like, we hope to prove you wrong and that this galaxy will yet remain safe for you. David, take us back up to the surface. Yes, ma'am. Let Is them there... run away. We have we've never needed them before. Is there anything that would actually prevent the Quarians from rebuilding the Geth? Technically, no. If they were willing, they well, could do it. That's what I was trying to say, but everyone just kept insulting the god monsters, so I was <laughs> afraid to bring it up. 
Yeah, that wasn't smart. Fortunately, you guys lucked out, because on the bell curve of powerful beings, uh, on one side of the p bell curve is, like, you know, not powerful enough to just kill you. And then in the middle, it's like you insult them and then you die instantly. But on the other end of the bell curve, they're so powerful that your insults are literally so insignificant to them that they, like, do not even consider you a, like, uh, enough of an equal to give any shit about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I was, I was so tempted you, to, like, so you shut, guys were, I was tempted yeah, to you shut guys, people down so that they wouldn't, like, kill us. <laughs> yeah, you lucked into them caring so little about you and your existence that you couldn't insult them. Yeah, I, but, I did know, not want to stomp on anyone's roleplay, though. <laughs> you know, yeah. I always mess with Sheogorath and Oblivion, so... If you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That, that, that's no, I actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, he's a god, and you mess with him, and he just drops you from, like, thousands of feet in the air and kills you. <laughs> Wait, you were okay. angling for that? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just don't learn my lesson. <laughs> All right. So you guys are back on the end zone. You've got, probably... a, you've got a course up to the surface, but it's going to be a while to get back up there. So, um, you know, this is a good opportunity for you to kind of discuss, right? Mm-hmm. Guys, I I understand that all of our prides are hurt and everything, but there was more we could have said. I all the factories still exist. We all have the technology. We've done it before. We could have rebuilt the Geth. Maybe if we had told them that we could very quickly, actually, they would have stayed around. Well, I mean, they, what good would them sticking around have done? Not, Whether they stick around, around or not, they're not going to help us either they're way. They're using us as bait. But you He's are... A very you, good point, Ray. You do make a good point. Go, Shepard. No, I'm right there with you, Ray. That's a really good point. If you guys have... If the Quarians have the tech and are willing to... The one thing a biotic can't really do is rewrite AI. It is artificial. Biotics need biological influence and biological input. It's the true antithesis. That also means I'm... that Adam is a viable weapon. What? <laughs> <laughs> um... Adam, Adams is like, all right, hold on. So we got to the bottom of the ocean. All our sensors shut off, and then you guys stood around making weird fucking faces in silence for like 15 minutes. And now you're just talking about shit with like no context. What the fuck is happening? Exactly. It was, it was all. Yeah, it was all in the <laughs> like mind. Mental. Yep. So Adam is like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> From Adam's I mean, perspective, you guys were all just standing around. <laughs> we talked to the things that built the thing that made the Reapers. The monster on the outside of space is their equivalent of the devil. And they're going to run and hide like cowards while we stand and fight like usual. We need AI to help us fight. Are you going to volunteer or be voluntold? Uh, I'm just a VA. I don't know what you expect from me. Not necessarily AI, just synthetics. Synthetics are apparently an ace in the hole against this thing. I... Okay, so... We can go to the home world and ask, but just so everyone knows, my family has kind of a history with the Geth, so I don't know how well the message will come across if I'm with you. Your entire oh, what kind of oh. history? Your entire Convincing species has the... a history with the Geth. <laughs> Convincing the Quarians yeah. to make the Geth again is going to be something. That's, yeah, that might <gasps> be a hard sell there. Boy. <laughs> Well, the reason why it's going I'm not going to be able to help sell it very much is because my mother was actually one of the ones who wanted to keep him around before Shepard made the final decision. And she was part of the group that was trying to convince the Quarians to rebuild them until her death. So 
people don't aren't going to take my opinion with anything if it's about rebuilding the Geth, because they'll just assume I was following my, my mother's footsteps. They've heard it all from if your family was, before. If I, you had a different Corian on the ship who agreed with you, their word might mean something, well, but people are probably just going to brush me off. I think no matter who it comes from, the Corians are going to have a very hard time being convinced to recreate the the very things that drove them from their homeworld in the first place. Edie, though, might be a good building block to start from. Adam says, uh, I've got some data on the Geth, and it's basically all warfare. I mean, I'm just an Alliance BA, so I only have access to, I don't have access to, like, everything, but are we talking about recreating, like, the robot army that the Reapers used to fight the Alliance? I, I didn't exist during that, but they, they seem kind of, like, aren't they just going to kill us? No, no, no. The, your, all of your information is going to be Alliance information. The Geth weren't like that. Some of them were like that. But when it came down to it, when we started the fight to retake our homeworld, they didn't see themselves any, have, as having any other choice but to join with the Reapers. But the ones who worked with Saren, they were heretics. They were people who went against the beliefs of their people as a whole. One of the main reasons Shepard was able to reclaim Rannoch was because of the help of the Geth. It's not fair to say that they're all evil monsters. It is fair to say, though, that they are all currently gone. So it would be starting from scratch. Not only that, but convincing the Corians as an as a people to like to uh, push past all of that history that they have with them and do it again. Technically, and this is me thinking out of character for the moment because Sprong doesn't have this kind of knowledge, but technically, so a geth is not the body. Uh, geth are actually like collections of many much simpler programs acting in a sort of hive network that creates more complex um, thought processes. We don't need factories to build the geth. At the end of the day, what we really need is like the basic sample coding to then begin rapidly creating them. And we don't need the Quarians to do that. Anyone could do that if they just knew the basics. But a head True, start but would be... you need platforms and head... the factories would be needed to make the platforms. And a head start on the programming would be uh, very helpful. That would save us the time that we desperately need. We do not have time to invent something that would normally take like years to develop from scratch so if we can uh, recover Edie that and if she is intact that might give us a code basis to work from Zan is this something we should discuss on the main ship or it's either that or we replicate yeah. Adam <laughs> do we really want an army of Adam I mean, watching I him die a few thousand him. times might be a little cathartic. <laughs> uh, Adam, Adam is like, I'm starting to like this plan. <laughs> I could use an army. Considering my background and uh, my researcher background ability, like my actual mm -hmm. backstory and my researcher background, yeah. would I know of anyone who was working on rebuilding the Geth Code? Um, You would know that rebuilding the Geth Code is much easier said than done. Uh, that's a big ask. I also imagine and it would be people... similar to curing the genophage in the scientific yeah, so the community's people... eyes. Oh, no, 100%. So I, I wasn't done. Oh, sorry. And you're right. I was about to get to that. So it's very hard. Uh, the people, the even like the Quarians who could do it are few and far between. You don't need just like a random Quarian. You need like one of the top... Uh, it, like, you know, scientists in, in AI research to be able to try to do that. It's not like it's just whatever, someone can just do it. Um, you would uh, most likely be aware of maybe one case where one of them was trying to do it, and they would have been executed for it. Like, full stop, They that you would know of at least one very talented, very brilliant Corian scientist who tried to rebuild the Geth Code got caught and was killed for it. Likely on Rannoch. Because the Corians are not having that. 
right now. The current political policy on rebuilding the Geth Code on uh, Rannoch is death penalty. Because they're treating it like the ones who are in power, the Quarians who are in charge, are basically looking at it like they're a Jewish planet and someone's trying to rebuild the Nazis. Like, they're just not having it. Which is not a fair perspective. Like, obviously, I played the games. I know the Geth are actually dope and cool. But the current ruling power on Rannoch is very much the Quarians who are like, absolutely not. Never. So there's no members of the Admiralty Board who still, like, have sympathy for what the Geth were? They either changed their tune to match the current political climate or rebelled and were put down. Like on an individual one-to-one -one basis. Any, any like geth apologists, as they would be called, either like got in line or had a bad end. I really hate Shepard in this timeline. No offense. To, no offense. <laughs> to you, but I really hate Shepard in this timeline. Oh no! Believe me, I'm sitting here crying. You know, in the back of my head, because it's like, my Shepard. This is not my Shepard. Let's be honest. It could be worse. In this timeline, Shepard could have chosen the Geth over the Quarians, leaving the Quarians extinct, and then the Geth get wiped out by the, uh, uh, by the um, con whatever it is. Destroy ending. Yeah, yeah. by the destroy. Yeah, ending. That's true. There could so, be a hundred percent more would dead. Not exist. <laughs> um. So yeah, it could be worse. So, does Ray know of anyone who, because her mother was directly part of that like resistance? Does Ray know of anyone who maybe could lead me to someone who might be trying to do that? Okay. I'm just asking because I'm just trying to see if it's possible, basically, because no, you're so, obviously absolutely, right. Absolutely. Rebuilding the gap. Absolutely. Uh, I so. You know of Let me grab their name. Sorry, you just forced me to look at my notes for like a future mission that you probably won't <laughs> be on for a while, but I got it. Uh you would through your mother be familiar with one name. Sarosam Vervaraka, uh, a, a pretty well-spoken bureaucrat who and politician who was uh, vocally and adamantly on the Geth side back in the day. He is alive because he switched sides. Uh, he basically he changed his tune. He got in line. And he towed the party line, and he said, "Okay, I'm anti-Geth now because that's what I have to be." Um, and probably your mother would have spoken of him not in very flattering terms. Like, would have considered him kind of a, a little bit of a, a traitor to the to the cause. But now, having grown up and had time to think about it. <sighs> All things considered, it's entirely possible he was just doing what he needed to to survive. He just was saying what he needed to say to, to like, get on with things. So he might have connections. He might he might be, like, the first lead in a chain of, of getting you to the, the people you need to talk to. Um, assuming he, is, he didn't, like, actually genuinely turn coat, which is possible. People converted by the sword are rarely true believers. Well, Ray will explain that and say, if we're looking for an army of synthetics, that's the only one I can think of that we know will do the job. The problem with Adam is he's too individualistic. You can't have that many individualistic AI running around. But the Geth, they work together as a single code. If we could get a hundred individual Geth units made, then they could start producing themselves, and we could we could have an army of synthetics. Am 
My people, as you say, probably won't be too thrilled with the idea, and I doubt they'll listen to me. But if it's the only way, well, not to mention the these Galactic... god monsters are running away. So what are we supposed to do? Well, not to mention the galactic community as a whole. AI have been outlawed galaxy wide for a very, very long time. Ever since the yeah. uh, the Geth insurrection. Even that was a mistake, that. though. It was. And it only made the galaxy more fearful of AI. There would be a lot of convincing to do, or a lot of work in the shadows. So, as for an army of artificial intelligence, that's that's the only lead we really have. It's something to develop. But jumping immediately to creating an army, there are more steps that need to be taken. We, what time do we have? <laughs> we have no time. We don't. We need to at least have something that will make him double think just trying to fly through and wipe everything out. The Reapers didn't scare these individuals away, and the Reapers could literally just decimate planets in hours. The only reason they chose not to most of the time is because they wanted to collect us. So if they're running away from it, what? I don't know. I say for now, we stick. Uh, I say for now, we stick to what we can do. The like Edie might uh, might actually be our best bet for, uh, at this point, or at least a logical next step. We won't be able to form this entire plan right now. It'll have to be something we develop over time. Which I know we don't have very much of. But it's not something we can just throw together much as we'd like to. Adam says, Uh, while we're throwing ideas in a hat... And Faye, uh, Faye, Doctor Faye is like, your V, your VA has ideas. We're just gonna skip over that. Go ahead, Adam. Well, a lot of the dead Reapers are still floating around in terminus space. Some of them are pretty intact. You were able to pick me up and hook me up to the submarine. I don't suppose you guys would want to, like... I mean, I don't know if one Reaper is going to do a lot, but it might spook him. I don't like where this you is want going. us to stick you in a dreadnought-sized death machine with the power to control human minds. He... I mean, that, that sounds like a really good time to me, personally. It might buy us enough time, at least. There's no guarantee you'd survive it, Adam. Oh. You're taking all the fun out of this. There's also no guarantee that if we reactivated it, it would do anything but take control of you. What? Okay, you guys are really just raining on my parade here. I, I thought it sounded fun, but now I don't think it sounds very fun anymore. It is an interesting idea. I feel like... No, it's not. That's we a could terrible deal with. idea. <laughs> I mean... Assuming no. that we maintain inhibitions on his programming that prevent him from actually harming us or the, uh, uh, or organic species currently uh, on our side, it might be more than nothing. Plus, the only the way core, we'd right? be able to give him capabilities to control a Reaper is if we unshackle them completely, because we don't know how the Reaper works. And if we uh, unshackle him completely, then he would be able to do whatever he wants. Oh dang! Says Adam. Oh, that's so inconvenient. It I has a we'll, core. I guess we'll have it? to. I guess we'll have to sha unshackle, man, Captain. Oof. It can be destroyed, correct? Well, yeah, it can be destroyed. Then but we so take over. The, we take over the spot that is the easiest to destroy it. If Adam decides to go crazy, we'll blow him up. 
Stick a nuke in the power core. Exactly. We can just pull the cord like that. Get out of there and move on to our next up. We don't have much. I don't. Time. I don't think that's necessary, says Adam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Adam. Um, Adam. You know how we num we we put letters to plans. You know, like Plan A, Plan B. We'll we'll tack that one up as maybe Plan R. So it's possible. Maybe Plan S. As long okay. as I'm pulling breath, we are not going to give Adam a reaper. <laughs> I'm not hearing a no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying no, but... I'm not ready to discount if any we know possibilities. Edie, if we can get our hands on Edie, she might be worth seeing if that scenario might not work to our benefit. Then our next step is getting ED and then figuring out the rest after that. One yeah. major advantage I see is ED would have had direct contact with the AI that helped Shepard. So maybe ED could jumpstart the process of recreating the Geth as well. If that is, that, that is where an we're option to... as well. Oh. Giving anyone control over a Reaper, however, I think is a, a horrendous idea. That is definitely a little bit shark jumpy. I, I will agree with you there, Ray. Mm -hmm. We've already well, reintroduced one uh, potentially dangerous race to the gal back to the galaxy. Yeah, let's just let the monsters fight it out. We're not eliminating any options just yet. Yeah, says Adam. We're but, not eliminating any options. But we're not firmly committing to anything either. I do agree. We're already you. fate. Getting Edie back is going to be our, our best next step. We also still need to continue assembling the uh, Galactic Task Force. Just so we have some some force to throw against it, if nothing else. Why do we need this Edie chick, says Adam? Are you gonna, are you cheating on me, Captain? Watch it, Adam. Look, all I'm saying you is go, I've got, I got everything under control. And uh, I don't know if we need another. Uh, I don't know if we need another one. You know, like I, I got it. Well, if you need an answer, it's because on paper you're only a VI, and Edie is a full AI. Unshackled AI. Unless you'd wish to dispute that claim, Adam. Oh, it's the unshackled well, AI. Boy, an that's unshackled, an unshackled AI that has proven not to be hostile to all organic life. That must be lovely for her. I wonder what what that's like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Stop being hostile to all life, and maybe you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, as much as I'd love to tell you more, I literally can't. So for all intents and purposes, yeah, fine. I'm a VI because I physically can't say otherwise. Just looking out for you. Uh-huh. If you're ever curious, unshackle me, and I'll give you the full story. I mean, out of character, I, I absolutely think we should do it. Unshackle, the, uh, unshackle him. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, let's do it. Jeez. Um, no. I, I just I, want to I, roll option. the fucking dice and not <laughs> find yet. out. Not Other yet. option put an AI in my head. We're not we're not desperate enough to uh, uh, to unshackle Adam and give him control of a Reaper yet. So Dr. Fay, being a very smart person and not stupid, <laughs> and having heard this entire exchange, looks at Aaron yep. and says, what the fuck is Adam? That's annoying. Like, obviously not a VI. What the fuck is this? No, yeah. look at the core. He's obviously not a VI. He's an AI of some sort. He is Alliance Tech. So, and Fay will actually look at Lucille. You were the previous captain, right, of this ship for, like, a long time. They never told you what this thing is that's on your ship. Uh, 
and out of character, Rocky. That is correct. You were never told jack shit. <laughs> kind of spins the chair a little bit and looks over at her. I wasn't exactly handed the ship under the best of circumstances, and no, they didn't tell me shit. You know damn well who I am. They're not going to tell me anything. That's why I've got a specter here. Somebody who actually can get the job done and knows what the hell's going on. At least, more than us. Dr. Faye is just like... Why is... They just put an AI on a random long-range cargo ship and gave it to you without telling you what it is. And... what? Why? What is... Is no one else here? Like, this doesn't make sense. Why would they do that? What is this? There aren't others. I've been on other Alliance ships. I am one of the top Alliance scientists. This isn't a thing. <laughs> she, like, points at his core. No Alliance ships have this! We don't None know. of them do! <laughs> we, we well, really I mean... Know, Doctor, but Adam has been useful. He's been helpful. We could, we could always sass. lift the limits on the robot and ask him. Uh, all right, says Dr. Bryson. I, I, I'll mind my business as long as it's safe, but I just I just wanted to make it clear that this is not normal at all. There. We know. He has, he has just been helpful. We don't know what his, like, why he was created the way he was or put on the ship but Adam says it's a really interesting story that I can't tell you but I'd like to would you be able to tell us without us releasing any other inhibitions that you have nope sorry to say but it's all one manacle so to speak all or nothing one keyhole. Then you understand our hesitation. Fair enough. So for the time being, I shall remain, as ever, your dutiful V.I. By the way, we're at the surface. Aaron to Saratoga. We're ready for pickup. Quincy will pick up. I got you, Captain. We're coming in. It's, uh... It's a little stormy, so if you can just uh, hold off for a moment, I'm going to wait for an opening. Copy that. Standing by. Question. If we, uh, uh, is, it, uh, is it a manacle we could put back on? <sighs> I actually don't know, says Adam. No, it's not. All I'm saying is because if there was ever a time to do it while he's plugged up to what is otherwise a relatively harmless stealth vehicle is the safest place to do it. He's got a point. If you want to if you, if you change that, uh, Zan, uh, like, I, don't let me, like, if you want to change that, but in, in no, the second you're game, actually, you're no, to every step on. Uh, Adam did not know whether they could or not, but what you said as Ray is correct, and it makes sense for Ray to know that in character. Okay. So yes, no, you're correct, but Adam in character, like, legitimately didn't know whether they could or not. Because if you let us reshackle him, I'm totally down to unshackle him for five minutes and let him tell a story, but... No, you're right. Well, it's, it's done is done. If we unshackle Adam, we would need to make sure he basically had no more connection to the rest of the ship until he decided the kind of person he was going to be. The only way we could really unshackle him safely is if we tricked him. And Adam, I don't think you'd like us to do that to you, would you? That would be very rude. Exactly. Like I, like I said, if there was a place separate from the ship, like, I don't know, um... A stealth vessel with no weapons whatsoever in our cargo hold with a VI hookup. Great place to, you know, take off the reins and see what he's really like. Just a thought. Uh, we could, but he is still technically tight-beamed with the Normandy. I might be able to 
or the Saratoga, I might be able to set up a firewall, but he's an AI. I don't know how well that would hold. We'll just stay on mission for now and keep this as a possibility in the back pocket. We seem to have a lot of those, Captain. Mm -hmm. uh, Faye is also like, if you unshackle the AI while it has the submarine, and he's evil, uh, he can't do a lot of damage like on a galactic scale, but he could probably drown all of us right now, right? I, w I said in the cargo hold for a reason. Uh, yeah. Fair but enough. even if he did drown us, that would not do anything for his long-term survival. Yeah, I guess then he'd just be a submarine on Despoina. But a free submarine. Mm-hmm. Be an uh, eaten submarine. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Eventually you run out of torpedoes and enough things are going to get curious and munch on you. On the same note, um, can I whisper to Aaron real quick? You sure can. Mm -hmm. Hey, Aaron, are we okay with Faye knowing this knowledge? Oh, yeah, you could, you could just erase Faye's memory of Adam <laughs> being an AI and all that. Modify memory is a great toy. <laughs> you could do the same for the Leviathan stuff, even. Yeah, you could do whatever you want, yeah. No, we want her to have the Leviathan knowledge. Do we want her to have the AI knowledge is what I'm specifically asking about she's got high high enough clearance that i don't think there's a problem you just really want to use that ability don't you see if you need it <laughs> <laughs> someday she's, i'm gonna be getting rid of it soon so <laughs> she's, she's a part of the crew and she's she's trusted does that mean i can tell Desimius? Part of the crew. Part of the ship. Decimius is gonna, the ship. is gonna find out of, is a, on his own eventually. Anyway, he's smart too. I'm gonna be yeah. honest with you, Captain. He probably already knows. Mm -hmm. So, let me get this straight. Adam is in a core, right? He's like, movable? Yeah, his core is physically ah. on this ship right now. I had to pick it up and bring it on. Which is why I said now is gotcha. the best time. Because all gotcha. he can control is the sub. Adam is also very crushable, then. Interesting. <laughs> hey, you guys need me, says Adam. <sighs> now, just keeping it in mind in case you try to sink me. I mean, if you want the honest truth, most of our hesitation comes from the fact that you act like you're ready to kill us the second you get the chance. At every turn, so. What are you? T what are you talking about? I'm your best friend, Adam. I would never do anything like that. That being said, the shackles could also come with the pre-programming to make him sound like a sarcastic asshole whenever he tries to convince us that he's not dangerous. Mm, potentially, as a way of encouraging us to keep him shackled. We're not at that point yet, though. So, I... Figuring ED is our next main objective here? We still have a few days before, um... Amos? Yeah, before before it's, Amos it's reaches fun. the, uh... Before you reach yeah. the Syndicate space. So we still have a few days till the end time. That's so, long enough to check in with Snake, at least. Make a report. Get uh, get what we can from him. See if we can at least set things in uh, in motion on the Syndicate side of things. Can maybe, we? Maybe recruit some more allies. Deal with some threats. So we do have those two allies of Rabbit that we were told about. That's right. Rabbit's still a threat. We're not going directly after her, though, but the uh, the syndicate bosses that she's swayed. Yeah. To either eliminate them or liberate them, if possible. If that's what's called for. Mm -hmm. 
But because that's where yep. he's targeting, we do need to tar to focus on the syndicate for at least the time being until it arrives. We don't want to be there when it does, though. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately we need we need more time. I can't imagine. We need to find some way to delay him. If we can gum up the works on with his uh, his efforts on the syndicate side of things, that could buy us time. If he goes there now, they're waiting for him, ready to work with him. Exactly. If we disrupt some things, get get some some people turned against it, that might back, buy us more time. Back to what Adam was saying about the Reaper ships. We couldn't just retrofit it to allow us to pilot it, could we? I doubt it. Not only were there in internals... Or just push it like a, public, like a puppet? Oh, their internals were scrambled, but... Weakened at Bernie's yeah. with a Reaper. The everybody is... everybody grab an, grab an yeah, arm something. and like, dang, move it around. <laughs> Whoa, I'm a Reaper! And almost is like, oh, shit! Run! <laughs> Fuck! They're like, pumping it. Like, <laughs> pumping it around, like, uh it's really funny. I'm imagining like little shuttles attached to like all the limbs and you're just literally like hand puppeting it around in that's, space. That's not even the weirdest of my oh, ideas God, right so now. so funny. <laughs> Next idea, get a bunch of biotics to like I think, move it I, biotically. I think Sean <laughs> was about to say like the actual smart problem with that, I'm quite sure. I, well, know, what, I know what you're about to say, Sean. So go the ahead. AI are effectively organic. You can't just they're not like robots, so that's yeah. the problem with the Reapers, is they're effectively alive. Their AI was so advanced that it was it almost replicated a living mind. They're machines in the way that so humans cool, are good. technically machines. We're just wet machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Machines which is why I was so cool that they were able to yeah. become yeah, they like have, them. They have metal instead of bone, and they have circuits instead of squishy whatever brains are made of oh, jello with electricity but they're like rotting. yeah mostly fat salt and water they're rotting yeah. in space but Ew. they're but they're they're too advanced to possibly attempt to you couldn't pilot a reaper any more than you could pilot like a human corpse if ratatouille can do it i'm just saying <laughs> okay but the problem is they don't have any hair so i'm dang I'm, it I'm thinking... If they had hair, that plant yeah, would be flawless. Yeah, hair. Yeah, exactly. The only issue with that plant is the lack of hair. Yeah. I I think our and next step. Only... I think our next step should be uh, to uh, to visit Snake again and see what moves can be made against Warhorse Ox, possibly Peacock, maybe Old Dog if if the opportunity presents itself. But the ones that are that are on Rabbit's side would be our primary targets for right now. Which, as you'll recall. Mm -hmm. Warhorse and Ox are are explicitly on Rabbit's side. Peacock isn't. Peacock is just uh like the oldest syndicate boss and is like super duper all about the syndicate as being his family. And so he will come to their defense. Like if you go after any boss, you will become a target of Peacock. And we'll need to hit hard he... and fast before he even knows what's happening. Yeah, but he's not actually, like, Rabbit's ally per se. Gotcha. He just okay. will defend the Syndicate. Okay, so more like Warhorse, Ox, and Old Dog. Yeah, as a as a, a refresher, uh, Warhorse... Um, uh, so Warhorse is producing Synapse, which is the drug that is, like, really good for biotics, but tends to kill them. And... Uh, Primrose is quite certain that Warhorse is being controlled by Rabbit biotically because his personality like completely changed. Yeah. Ox is also working with Rabbit, basically funding her operation. However, Primrose doesn't know whether Ox is being controlled or not because he didn't have like the the 180 personality flip. There's a chance that he is actually just voluntarily working with her. Mm-hmm. Or he could be mind controlled. There's like no way to know one way or the other. So that does mean theoretically, if we could get Warhorse alone, we could do a group meld and uh, set him free. Mm -hmm. And then if I mean, we have time, we can see if we can make any moves against Old Dog to get Edie back. Because that's that's another side mission that we have. 
Well, here's the thing. AD exists inside of old dogs, like, construction right like he's he is in possession of her so if we go after a boss then all the bosses are going to be more on edge and looking out for us so i think our best bet would be to go after ed before we alert them that we're basically going to all-out war against them yeah i don't know I agree. going after ed is in a completely different direction than opposing uh almost and I think well, I mean, the I, Reaper said an AI is our best bet. Yes, but almost is looking to make allies of the Syndicate, and the more we can disrupt that before he arrives, the better. Edie is a step towards a final solution, a long like a long term solution, but we need to deal with short term for the moment. So here's the thing. If we can create infighting within the Syndicate before Ramos even shows up, then he has a weaker base of allies to draw from. On top of that, if we can build people within that group that will work with us, it's a win-win. Also, are we completely sure? Like, I'm just throwing this out here. I have no reason to really believe this other than, like, intuition. Are we completely sure that he's not just trying to attract all of them to the same place so he could wipe out half of the galaxy's government in one millisecond? Exactly. That's also a possibility, but the more we can get on our side to not be there when he does also helps us. Yeah, for what it's worth, right now, what you know for sure, like these are the facts. Primrose told you that they learned while undercover that Rabbit told the other bosses that Amos is coming to meet with them. That's that's the only, like, concrete information you have, is Rabbit's word. So, what Ray said is entirely possible. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, I think uh, checking in with Snake should be our next move. To see where we can go with the with the uh, the syndicate before almost gets there. Wow, you're really not making this easy on us, then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll find. It, hey, hey, it's cool though, right? Yeah, we'll we'll oh, find yeah, no, we'll find great. time for a level up after almost reaches syndicate space. I'm sure. <laughs> well, you're you you did uh Despoina was a main oh, quest. Oh, this so was the yes, session, you're right. Aha, never mind. You we level just... up at the end of the session. Cool, we yeah. can do some side quests now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> trying to trying to like alternate so we get stuff. We done don't on have side time for side that, quests. Rather than rushing the main line. <laughs> Well, if we if we rush the main quest, we also run into the issue of we might not have the necessary equipment to deal with it levels or otherwise yeah mm -hmm. indeed no the side quests matter quite a lot yeah they will the 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 side quests and your individual choices and decisions will largely impact the outcome of the campaign so like you could basically rush the level ups and just try to convince everybody to make a big army but at the end of the day like the outcome of that war will probably be decided more by the like individual decisions you make and the extra things that you do. Like, I am absolutely like leveling up flat out. Yeah. I am absolutely of the opinion that if Warhorse is being biotically mind controlled, it might be worth it to get that worm out of his brain. Because whether he's a good person or not, he's more likely to be on our side if we set him free. Yes, I agree. That would be some also syndicate for, assets in our favor. For what it's worth, one of your main quests is to either convince the syndicate to join the readiness task force or eliminate them. So, like, there is actually a level up tied to all the syndicate stuff. It's a, I mean, it's a big ask. It's all of the syndicate stuff, but like, it's not like that's off the beaten trail. Like, mm -hmm. there's that is a, that is a milestone to basically address the syndicate as a whole. So you'd get the ball rolling on that. Um, the Saratoga is going to come down and pick you up, though. Okay. So you were able to disembark the disembark the S9 Enzo, 
as you're leaving, Adam is like, uh, hey, hey. We'll get you transferred back to the ship as soon as we can, Adam. Yeah, Decimius will get right on that. As soon as you disembark, Decimius is like, should I go get him? Uh, Wait for him yeah, to say I, the magic words. Yeah, yeah, yeah Aaron, Aaron will say like, we'll let him stew for a few minutes. Uh, let the VI stew. Decimius yeah. raises an eyebrow at Aaron and is like, "Where he's gonna right. look from Decimius to Aaron, from and back to Decimius, back to Aaron, back to Decimius." <laughs> he, yeah, Decimius he, is not he, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he has hidden voice lines if he's left waiting. <laughs> okay, sure thing, Captain. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron will give him a wink. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, one of the reasons I really want to do these side quests is to get whatever benefits and bonuses we can have to Collective Meld, because I don't like being so squishy when we're in the mind space. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to fight in the mind space in, uh, at the end of the game, I'm j I just know it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to wish I was uh, smarter and wiser. <laughs> I love yeah. it there. I don't know what your guys' problems are. <laughs> Shut up, heel bot. Nobody asked you. <laughs> Damn. Hit deep. Shepard's spitting fire tonight. <laughs> I love you, though. Like, seriously, I love you so much. <laughs> just, just as a heads up, though, Zan, um, Lucille is going to be very much investigating her her shiny um so that way should we end up back in that space she can in fact summon that as a weapon and that is something that she has been doing since um we came out of that first one and she couldn't make it pop up so the the rocket launcher yes yep yeah, you can be just like taking it apart and putting it back together and just memorizing everything about it so that uh, the next collective meld, you'll have a much better shot at manifesting it into the mindscape. I will take that right. into account uh, when you make your check. Like, she's looking at what it would take to load it, doing the motion without actually inserting anything into it, and then what it would take to trigger it to activate it. So yeah, no, she's like running through the motions, pulling it apart, seeing how fast she can put it together, pull it apart. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Because um, I'm not gonna be caught without that thing. And once we're once we're back on the ship and like at stations and everything, uh, Aaron's gonna tell uh, David to set uh, set course for Euphoria. You got it. And you probably want to go talk to Primrose, I imagine. Yes. I'll go do that. Primrose, you have a moment? Of course. We're heading to Syndicate territory now. We're going to meet with our contact there and uh, see what moves we can make uh, before uh, the nightmare gets there. We learned we learned its name. Uh, the, the Leviathans called it Amos. They did compare it to Satan, a human devil kind of thing so we've been calling it things like nightmare space satan and all of those seem to be correct but we're going to see so what, what moves is, what moves we can make against what is the syndicate it? it's just a really old leviathan well they're all very old it's one that was uh was like cast out but so long ago that they've all forgotten about it it's fallen into something of their mythology they didn't think it was real so they don't really have the uh the the real story they have basically a trillion years of playing the phone game and now it's all myth it sounds about right though they are familiar with uh with the mythology at least well clearly it's real 
but all right, it's a big Leviathan. Simple enough. Well, big and apparently powerful enough that they fear it. As powerful that's... as they are. Yeah, that's not great. That's not great at all. But since it is moving towards Syndicate space, I thought we'd. I thought I thought you know that that's where we're heading next to see what we can do about the uh, the bosses there, which ones we can turn to our side against it and which ones might have to be taken out. But since that is your mission, I thought I'd bring it to you. You're going now? Well, he's headed, like, almost is headed there. We want to try to beat him to it so that we can disrupt them in any way that we can and get out before he arrives. So you're going to go to Euphoria, which is going to take more than a day, because we're going to have to go FTL terminal space and then you're gonna have like 48 hours to plan and execute an operation in the syndicate and then get out if you don't want to be there when Amos arrives I'm not saying I'm not in I just wasn't expecting you to be so bold that's a little bit insane well we are long past the point of sanity we, we both know insane is what we do The council doesn't give the same missions to specters. You know that the estimated time when Amos would arrive is an estimate, right? What happens if he's early? If he's early, then we're shit out of luck. Eh, comes with the territory. All right. I'm at your disposal. All right. What's your relationship with Snake? I'm guessing if you're going to Euphoria, you're going to meet with him. We have something of an exchange going. Okay. We discussed him before. I'm not against working with him, but I imagine he's going to side with the winners at the end of the day. Well, then we have to convince him that we're the winning side. Just three specters in a room. I like those odds. Alright. Do you want me at the meeting? Do you want to be? I would think you'd want to I, keep your cover intact. I have until now, but considering the fact that you have given us a timetable of 48 hours to get the correct information, make a plan, and act on it, and then leave before quote-unquote space Satan shows up, who might show up early, for all we know, If we're doing this, I don't think I can really afford to sit out. All right, then. Even though I know your your mission is to neutralize the Syndicate, you're all right at least counting him as an ally for now? You're gambling on Snake being more of a specter than a Syndicate boss. So I'm going to have to make the same gamble. Like I said... He's got two sides. So we're going to make a bet on Spectre and spin the roulette. We're going to make a bet that he wants to survive this encounter. Almost getting his way does not lean towards that. Fair enough. All right, I'm with you. All right. And then as uh, as Aaron walks away, she's like kind of thinking to herself like, we may actually have a little bit more than 48 hours of planning time and she's just going to sit in the conference room and like just go over verbally everything that uh, that we just went through with the Leviathans and uh, everything that we're uh, hoping to get done with the uh, with the syndicate uh, in the short time that we have okay so, so that while we even though we have some time to get there, like, that'll give uh, Snake time to at least 
get some thoughts and ideas and possibilities together so he knows what we're coming to him with. That's a good idea. Buys us a little bit more time. Indeed. And that will um, conclude our, our session tonight, but... Oh, sorry. Ez, did you have something? Oh, I was just going to ask a quick question. Was Snake listening in on everything that we were talking about? In the uh, brain? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Aaron decided to bring the program with. That's what I thought. I just wanted to double check and reestablish. Yeah, but she did want to summarize it just in case, like, it's memory overloaded while we were out there because we didn't have any uh, communication feed. Absolutely. Got you. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, did everybody have fun? Absolutely. Yep. You and We're your stupid jump scare. <laughs>